So yeah, guys, we've got the new um, center stand on here. And where I was going was kind of center stand or exhaust. That doesn't make too much sense. I was planning to put exhaust on this bike. It was something that I was really, you know, dreaming about, uh, very excited about it. I was first going to put the Yosh pipe on here. Um, uh, Yoshimura makes a great pipe for this bike and the SB650. Um, I didn't put that on because it blocks, actually blocks uh, putting on the center stand. So I didn't feel too good about that. Um, but in any event, all the stuff that I'm talking about, I can always change. I can take stuff off. But I was looking at the Akrapovich uh, exhaust for the V-Strom. And actually, it, 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 it's a little bit easier to put on. And it allows you to retain the center stand. So that's what I was looking at. But as I said, center stand or exhaust, um, one of the things I was doing with this bike was trying to keep it lightweight reason why we got this bike because it was lightweight and was fun to manhandle around in the turns and uh, I had gotten the uh, side stand prematurely probably um, but recently I decided against getting the exhaust and that meant I might as well just put the center stand on and uh, not that there's anything wrong with the stock exhaust actually the stock exhaust is okay but but the catalytic converter is in the muffler. It's not under the bike. So if you do, you know, any kind of exhaust, even a slip-on, you are elim eliminating the cat. So you're eliminating a lot of heat, but primarily you're eliminating a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of weight. And that's what I was. My primary reason for doing that was to get rid of the weight. I'm not doing that now. We've got the center stand on there. But it's sure nice to get out on the bike again. I hope everything's going well with you guys. And uh, I understand some may still be um, after bikes in storage, dealing with a lot of snow. And that's why I like to do these videos where I get out and about. Now, as far as bikes go, I've been looking at the SV650. There's a couple local local that uh, I could get with ABS. There's one down in Simi Valley that was without ABS. And I might have explained to you that it was kind of weird because it had all the ABS stuff on it. It just wasn't hooked up. So I found that a little bit weird. I, I don't want the stuff on there. I want all that off. So I need to adjust my visor. Hold on, guys. And, uh, good. So I've been, been thinking about that. Um, but also, the new bike that I have entered my brain is the V-Strom 1050. And maybe that bike is a better fit for me, ergonomically. And... I've tried to make this bike work. I love this bike. And there's nothing wrong with this bike. It's important to say that. The problem is with me, I'm abnormally tall. I'm 6'4", and there are a lot of bikes that I like, but I simply can't fit them, and I don't ride them. And I thought I could kind of get away with it on this bike because adventure bikes tend to be a little bit bigger. And uh, it's, it's okay. But um, I have rheumatoid arthritis. I'm starting to have problems with my hips now. Uh, I can't, I don't want anything that to contribute to any kind of uh, physical problems. Um, if I'm gonna be sitting on something for hours at a time, um, I don't want it to be uh, screwing me up, if that makes any sense, so. 
Okay, we're not going to use the turnout. All right. That's okay. That's okay. Just ignore me. Just ignore me. This guy's going a little bit faster. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah. It is expensive, though. I feel that the 1050 is maybe a thousand dollars too much. I don't know why Suzuki has it priced so high. So they're just going to say, well, we have the bare bones model. You can get that. No. I mean, a lot of that stuff. People are going to want on a bike. You just want that stuff naturally. You're going to want to have at least have, I mean, we all have to have ABS now. It's you know, required by law. But we're going to want that, you know, that, uh, excuse me while I do this, that six axis IMU. We're all going to want that. We're all going to want throttle by wire so we can have um, cruise control and rider modes and what else are we going to want yeah cruise control and in a, a six axis IMU um, increases the efficiency or the ability of the ABS system to work and the traction control system so and you know the throttle by wire uh, so it, it aids and all that kind of stuff so what i'm trying to say is it's kind of silly to have a throttle by wire system and not have a imu you can get away with it um but it doesn't really add up so anyway the 1050 just seems to be a little bit better for me ergonomically and you know uh, uh, just getting on and off this bike, riding this bike sometimes, even with this tall seat, I am tweaking out my hip, my left hip, which is the one that's bothering me the most. And uh, my family has a history of hip replacements, and I know that's probably coming um, at some point in my life, but not right now. I just don't want to, I don't want to come to, uh, contribute to that pain that I have so it's either the Suzuki V-Strom 1050 or the new Multistrada Ducati Multistrada V4S for $24,000 I've been watching all the reviews like you guys have on that bike sounds like a great Canyon car very similar to the to the last gen of the DL1000 v -Strom. I mean, that was, you know, that was so fun to just uh, bark around the turns. Um, but it's interesting, the, the, the gas mileage on that thing. <laughs> it's worse than what I had on my MT-10. It's supposed to be their touring model. I think that's kind of a strange omission or something that they overlooked by mistake. So, ooh, I'm going to take a shower. That guy's about to take a shower. So we're going up to 33 yet again. And hopefully we can get around this guy. All right, that's one down. One down and one more to go. Woo. It's a fun little game in California. I don't know if you can see the indentations and in these little reflectors on the middle of the road. Not the greatest thing for your front forks to be hitting that all the time. 
I try to work it so I can make it in between them. I pass cars, but it's very hard to do. Wow. It's like night and day. I was back here yesterday. It was just so windy. I mean, I was kind of hanging off for dear life back here. Now it's, uh, it's windy. I mean, it's just normally windy, but it's not death apocalypse science fiction movie um, <laughs> wind blasts or Now it's gonna be, I'm not gonna say anything, I'll jinx it if I say anything. Oh, so much better without wind. I was going to say, I wonder when I'm going to find another car. It's amazing that I don't have any cars over there right now. Tree branch, somebody get that out of the road, please. I feel obligated to stop and move that branch. Yeah, really thinking about the 1050, you know. Maybe still keeping this. Wouldn't that be weird? Well, if I do that, the center stand's coming back off. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm going to strip this bike of everything. All right, so hopefully I can get up in front of this guy before this idiot does anything. All right. Thanks for letting me have the room. And I will pull in front of this guy. All right, how are you doing? Oh, oh, butt hurts. I will do a sexy transition. Right here. All right. Alright, I will escort these vehicles through the construction site. Now keep up with me, everyone. Don't dawdle. So this is the famous landslide. Hmm. parking place. Just gonna get their natural water. Ooh, a lotus. You don't see that every day. Ooh, a lotus. Brand new. Looks like it's brand new. Maybe he just has that. So, one of the things I saw yesterday that was interesting was, uh, uh, obviously, the, I think it was the Southern California Porsche Club that was out. I mean, I came up this road yesterday, and, and on 150 as well, um, just saw, geez, I would say 60 cars, 60 Porsches. Oh. 
You know, you see a group of them and you go, oh, some friends are out driving their Porsches. And then you see another group of them and you go, hmm, another group out with their friends. And then you see another group and you go, wait a minute. Is this a planned event? <laughs> I can't, wait. I can't wait to get off my bike and check my social media and see if I have been hashtagged as the guy who wouldn't let the handicapped person cross the street. As you know, we're very politically correct here in California. So I'm going to make a big deal about that. I'm going to edit it in slow motion and you know, the, whole, the whole nine yards. Wow, look at that thing. Well, yeah, much better today. And uh, what's weird about the wind is there's so much more dirt on the road. So much more erosion. But it is two o'clock, so we don't have to worry. You don't have to worry at all about ice or anything, so we're good. Oh, I could go so much faster without this damn center stamp! Racing career is ruined. I just don't like spending. I mean, what was it like? I mean, it was the OEM brand too. I mean, it was like $300. That's a lot of money for me to be spending on anything. So, uh, just have it sit there. So, it'll come in handy at some point, you know. I mean, I should explain, oh god, I forgot to explain, is that I put, I have racing stands, so I put spools on the back of my bike and I put the rear end up on a racing stand, so it's not like I can't get to the rear tire and do the chain and stuff like that, so that's, I have spools on this bike and that's how I do it, so if you're curious, um, and that is an option, but I will have to say I'm getting to the point, I'm getting to the age where Doing the race stand is not the easiest thing for me to be doing. Um, lining it up and stuff. The spools are way too small on this bike. I should, I should probably put bigger ones on, you know. So you have to get spools for senior citizens that are big, that we can see real easily and line up real easily. These are just like regular size spools. Um, but they are small. So the EvoTech ones that I got for the MT-10, those are huge. And they kind of act as uh, uh, crash protection as well when they get big like that. So. Well, so the point of these small ones, I just don't think there's really any point to it, you know. So in racing, you don't even use the spools. You use, um, there's like a, it's just, it's a little uh, piece that you put on the rear um, swing arm and you just, so you can do it really quickly. Um, you're not lining anything up. Sixty-five now, guys. Sixty-five. What do you think? Like, I still got um, more uh, biking to do. And it's really clear out there. You can see the Channel Islands. So, 
if you are unaware of Santa Barbara, you have islands um, that line the coast next to uh, Santa Barbara, and that keeps, which is really uh, beneficial to us. We don't get the really high surf that we probably a lot of surfers would like, although Rincon is a famous beach that is in this area. But, you know, if there's a typhoon or earthquake or whatever, or some big some Muami thing happens, the brunt of that is taken by those islands and not our coast. So that's good. Wow, significantly colder back here. Now I'm going to be stopping and putting my liner back in my jacket. I saw a good YouTube video by Bike World where the guy was talking about winter riding and getting heated stuff and I mean that's what I'm thinking is there is there any point in getting um heated grips if you have heated gloves sorry I didn't mean to spaz out on the brake there but I just don't want anybody I don't want to be going around a turn fast when people are passing. So, it just takes one idiot who is passing in the turn to Okay, I remember when I had my first fast bike. Oh. I wave, yes. Wave, wave. Catch up. Need to catch up, guy. There's nothing more humiliating than being last. If you're not first, you're last. Don't listen to these people, Ricky. You're a winner. You've got the gift. Always remember, if you ain't first, you're last. Yes, heated, heated um, equipment. So I'm really curious about that. I mean, I've been very interested in getting heated grips, not necessarily for this bike, but you know, looking forward to it. Let's say I got a BMW, you know, won the lottery and a BMW GS or something. Um, I would definitely think about getting heated. Heated. Uh, I would like to enjoy the heated grips, but do you need heated grips if you have heated gloves? I would think not. So a solution for this part um, might be uh, heated gloves. You know, and the thing about the, the lining and the jackets and taking stuff off and putting it back in, you're just turning something off. So, but for the jacket, I guess I would have to hook it up to the bike, which is not that big of a deal. But, um, To think about now that I'm freezing my oh it's 64. I know a lot of you people are probably going 64 what a wimp that's cold it's not cold at all it is cold when you don't have your jacket on and you got this mesh thing going on right now on the old throttle lock there and give ourselves a break. It does come in handy, although uh, that 1050 with that cruise control. Uh, and that's the thing, you know, this bike's fine. I just don't I mean, I, I have pain in my hip right now, probably because I've been kind of putting my knee down, but, or knee out, I shouldn't say knee down, that's hilarious. So if you remember my golden leaves video, you can see all those golden leaves are gone. <laughs> Ooh, wish we had a super clutch. No, I'm just kidding. But I can't beat the 
range of this bike. That's the, my favorite thing about the bike. And the most understated thing, I mean, nobody ever mentions it. It should probably be on the first of well, this when people review this bike. 60 miles to the gallon. too hard to maintain. I mean, there's nothing out here. There's not even cell service out here. So. Now, will I put the liner back in after this video? I don't know. Interesting minds. There's the guy on, I see this guy all the time in his um, Shelby Cobra. Oh, it's an FJ-10. Oh, there's a house down there. Can't see it. I can't. I'm so high up. Well, 
I hate passing somebody right when I'm about to go off the road here. But we are. Six gear. Somebody's probably been screaming the whole time. What is it? He just shifted. Well, I did, folks. You happy now? But I am definitely going to turn around. We've had enough fun for today. It's been a little funky. Not 100%, but I'm, I'm good enough to do this, but as far as dealing with um, snow and I really wanted to go up into the mountains today, but do a little, not necessarily off-road, well, I guess it's a fire road, but I don't really consider that off-road. basically go up that place where I did the retired video. Half of that is a dirt road. So. And I haven't been up it in a while, and I haven't been up that road with snow. I think it'll follow be pretty cool. I definitely put my liner in that, in that situation. <laughs> But, but a lot of motorcyclists, like you saw that group early on there, um, you know, people do a loop. They come up from L.A. and they kind of do a loop. And they come back on 33, go back down 33. And going this other direction, you will eventually hit 101. Um, and you can go back down to L.A. So I think that's what people do to figure out what that loop is. I am trying to explore some stuff in LA, but you know, I am 90 minutes away from it, which is not that big of a deal, but still, it's like all the stuff that I want to go explore, I have to travel quite far just to get there. And it's all freeway stuff, really. So I have to figure out a way to get to these places without doing the freeway. There's the place. where I usually stop. <laughs> um, 64. I mean, we got, we got, we got enough gas. We can go all the way up to the top here. So it doesn't, I'm looking up at the mountain right now, it doesn't look like there's a lot of, a lot of snow up there anyway. So there is no snow. I mean, I can tell from right here. So, 64 degrees right now. It might seem cold to wind chill factor on the motorcycle, but it's certainly not cold enough to keep snow around at 2 in the, two in the afternoon. But we'll go up here and turn around. know what 
to call this autoblog. I didn't really talk about it or anything. I mean, it's it's hard to talk about a center stand for an hour. <laughs> Oh, it's getting cold. I'm getting cold now. I'm really freezing. So as, as, as we go up into elevation here, obviously it's going to get colder. But, uh, it's not my, oh shit. this guy. We've done enough passing today. We've, we've filled our quota of passes. We'll just limp, limp up here. But it's so pretty, it's hard to stop riding. Alright, the video is still going. Well, guys, I'm getting close to where I'm turning around. Again, thanks for watching. If you're watching all the way through to this, thank you. Appreciate the support. Um, and we're going to have a little bit more exciting stuff going on once we get over this weird illness that I'm having right now. But uh, it's a minor thing, not a big thing. But not exactly making a lot of videos right now but uh thanks for watching guys i really appreciate the support please like the video that does really good things for the algorithm the our lives are been are now dictated by an algorithm somewhere And I want everybody. See, this is this is what I don't mind doing this stuff. Thank you. It's very nice of the mission wave. Oh, there is my. Jeez. Wow. How many things are you gonna do wrong today? You didn't let the woman in this wheelchair cross the street, and then you didn't wave to that guy. That's it. The ride is over, and you're fired. <laughs> But thanks guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Ooh, ooh. Might as well turn my bike around so it's in the right way here. It's icy. Well, yeah, maybe.